Hi everyone. In this video, you will learn a trigger sweep CRO. So what do you mean by trigger sweep CRO? What is the block diagram of trigger sweep CRO? How to generate a sawtooth waveform with a diode also. Okay. In the previous video, we have seen the sawtooth waveform generator, nothing but a time based generator, which produces a sawtooth waveform at regular intervals of time. Uh, that means the charging of the capacitor, discharging of the capacitor, charging when the transistor is in off state, when the UJT is in off state, the capacitor charges and whenever the sync pulse occurred, there the capacitor discharges. Here, in the trigger sweep CRO, this is the circuit diagram of trigger sweep CRO. See, what is the difference between this diagram and the previous diagram? Here, we have added a resistor R3 diode and R4. These are the additional equipment we have added compared to the previous diagram. In the previous diagram, we have only R1, R2 resistors with this UJT and the capacitor and resistor RT. Okay, and we have taken the voltage across this point across the capacitor C. But now we have added additionally this equipment to get this triggered sweep. See, this is the output waveform of this triggered sweep. Okay, now let us see how this output has been occurred across the voltage V0, voltage across capacitor resistor R4. See, assume the transistor is in off state. Assume the transistor is in off state. What happens in the off state of the transistor? The capacitor has a charging path. Okay, VBB is the final voltage up to which the capacitor has to charge through a resistor RT. So, the capacitor has a constant current flow through this resistor RT and the capacitor charges like this. So, capacitor charges at a slow rate like this. So, capacitor charges like this. Until what point it has to charge until either of the uh, these two. That means either this junction like VBE or this diode. Diode is also a junction. Uh, either of this one, either this diode has to on, either this transistor has to on. <coughs> Listen carefully. The capacitor is charging. The capacitor is charging. Until which point it has to charge either the diode or this UJT comes into on state. Okay, if any one of these are in on state, the capacitor have a discharging or holding period. Okay, if diode is switched on, then it is having holding period and if the transistor is in on state, then it is having a discharging period. Okay, so now we have selected a diode in such a way that if VD is the cut-in voltage of the diode, VD is the cut-in voltage of the diode and VP is the VD, this one is D, diode cut-in voltage. And VP is the cut-in voltage of the UJT relaxation oscillator. We are selecting the diode and UJT in such a way that VD is less compared to VP. VD is less compared to VP. That means the capacitor first charges up to VD then VP because first when the capacitor charges slowly from 0 it first touches VD and then VP because VD is less voltage compared to VP. So which uh, device comes into on state now first diode obviously ok. So capacitor charges slowly charges and when it reaches the voltage VD uh, immediately the diode comes into on state and it the capacitor has no charging path because whatever the current whatever the current coming from RT previously when both this UJT and diode are in off state only the current has a path to go through the capacitor so capacitor now charges but when this diode comes into on state because a capacitor reaches the voltage VD that makes the diode to on then the current flow has a path through this on diode and through this R4. Now current has a path like this. So whatever the voltage that has been accumulated in this capacitor that will be stored until the UJT comes into on state. UJT never come into on state in this situation. 
the UJT will never come into on state in this situation because the capacitor has a no charging path and no discharging path. Okay, whatever the current that is coming from VBB that directly goes through this on diode and to through this R4 and to the crown. Okay, so whatever the voltage that has been accumulated like VD, VD is the voltage across capacitor that will be like that until further trigger pulse because the transistor will never come into on state because there is no way to charge the capacitor to VP. Okay, when it reaches the VD, it is making the diode to switch on and there is no path to increase the capacitor voltage up to VP. Now, in this situation, what happens? The capacitor remains the voltage for long period like this. It maintains the same voltage VD like that. So, what we need to do now? We need to make the capacitor to discharge. So, how to discharge the capacitor? How to discharge the better? What is the way to capacitor discharge? Only through the UJT transistor. So, how UJT to switch on now? We are reducing the biasing supply by applying a negative triggering pulse at the base 1, at the base 2. Okay, this is base 1. So, what happens? We are reducing the junction potential. We are reducing the biasing supply. So, what happens here? We are reducing it by giving a negative supply. By giving a negative supply, we are changing the state of this UJT from off to on. So, when we are giving a negative supply here, what happens now the UJT comes into on state. UJT comes into on state by the application of this negative pulse at this base 2. So, when it is in on state, immediately capacitor finds the discharging path through this resistor R1. So, immediately whatever the charge that has been accumulated previously, now it is discharging because of the occurrence of this negative pulse. Okay. So, capacitor discharges drastically. Okay. And the same process again after reaching the certain level, again the diode is in on state, the BJT is in, UJT is in off state, when both are in off state, again capacitor finds its charging path through the resistor RT, so it again charges. Okay. Until VD. This process will be repeated and produces a triggered sweep CRO. Okay. Here there are three sets of time periods. Like in the previous case, there are only two time periods, uh, sweep time and retrace time. Here there are two, three time periods. One is uh, sweep time, another one is retrace time as we have discussed in the case of UJT relaxation oscillator. But additionally, we have holding time, hold off period where when the capacitor, when the diode is in on state, capacitor has no way to discharge, then it will maintain the same voltage for a long time until the occurrence of a negative trigger pulse. So, that period is called as holding period. Okay, this is what the triggered sweep CRO. Uh, some explanation is also written here. You can read out these points. Whatever I have explained, the say, their same points have been written here. Next, trigger pulse circuit. Trigger pulse circuit. If you observe the previous diagram and uh, previous diagrams, what we have discussed so far. In all of them, a trigger pulse is required. In the horizontal reflection system, three blocks are there. What are they? A trigger circuit, trigger circuit, followed by sweep generator or sawtooth waveform generator and followed by horizontal amplifier. Okay, that means every time we are keep on saying that a trigger pulse is required, a trigger circuit is required. So, what a trigger pulse consists of and how the trigger pulse is going to be generated. So, this is the just block diagram how to get the trigger pulse from the internal circuitry of the CRO. See, here we don't use any of the external supplies. Whatever the supplies that are there inside the CRO, what I have explained in terms of CSM, simple CRO, we will use completely and we can produce a trigger pulse. See, this is the horizontal vertical reflection system where we have an input signal that applied to vertical amplifier and this output is given to delay line canceller. The same output we are taking as internal signal. I told you there are three types of signals. One is uh, trigger pulse can be generated in three ways. Trigger pulse can be generated in three ways. One is line supply, which is nothing but from 230 volts. 
another one is internal signal which is from the vertical amplifier section another one is external signal external signal so external signal we don't we do not uh, generally and regularly refer whenever we need some additional equipment then only we have this uh, uh, external external signal and uh, remaining two are line and internal signal so let us see line line is nothing but we know line line and neutral in your switchboard also it is written as a line and neutral line is nothing but the supply 230 volts so we are taking the 230 volts and apply to our uh, CRO or CRT uh, that 230 volts has been stepped down to the voltage which is required to energize the electron gun that is of 6.3 volts that is of 6.3 volts already I have given this is 6.3 volts uh, in when I was explaining the CRT features okay 6.3 volts is required to energize the electron gun uh, that means the 230 volts has been stepped down through a transformer to 6.3 volts. The output of this 6.3 volts is uh, used to energize the electron gun and as well as we have taken the same voltage as a line supply here. This is what the line supply. And internal signal is internal trigger pulse, internal trigger pulse that is coming from the vertical amplifier output, vertical amplifier output. Now see a switch, a switch selector is there, a switch is there which can select any one of these three like internal, external or line. The output of this one is given to a comparator. What is the purpose of a comparator? Comparator will compare the two incoming signals and produces either 1 or 0, either logic high or logic low, either logic high or logic low. That means what is the output of a comparator which is nothing but a square waveform. Okay, see what happens. Comparator one input is fixed here, which is between uh, positive and negative voltage, a low voltage DC supply is there, so the same we are using here. A comparator one input is fixed at a reference level. Now, the other input is coming from the any one of these three sources. Whenever the incoming signal at this point, whenever the voltage at this point is greater than this reference voltage, output of this comparator is this maximum peak whenever this particular voltage is less compared to this reference voltage output goes to lower peak okay in a digital form you can also say it becomes a 1 and it becomes 0 when the input voltage is greater than the reference supply again it becomes 1 when the input voltage is less than the reference supply it becomes 0 okay so because of this nature of this comparator the output becomes a square waveform that square waveform again applied to a pulse generator which can convert the square to a pulse so what happens here we are taking a different uh, impedance circuit thereby producing a different time periods uh, compared to this uh, square waveform so pulse waveform is having shortest duration either on or off this one is the pulse Okay, this is the shortest duration. We can call it as pulse width. This is negative trigger pulse. This is negative trigger pulse. Suppose if you are asked to draw a positive trigger pulse, how will you do that? So this is the positive peak and it is negative peak. This is positive peak and it is negative peak. Pulses are having very shortest duration, either on or off. Definitely one should be very short. Okay, duty cycle, duty cycle should not be should not be 50 percent if duty cycle is 50 percent then definitely it is called a square waveform on and off are equal if duty cycle is not 50 percent it is a 30 percent or 70 percent then we can call it as a pulse waveform okay so pulse waveforms this is the example for the negative triggering pulse this is the example for positive triggering pulse very shortest duration signal okay so this is the way how to generate the pulse waveform using the internal circuitry like line supply, external supply and <coughs> internal supply. So some description is given here. These are the points what I have discussed with you. Okay. Thank you.